Hi class, this is Tammy Tragus McCook and I am so glad to be here. I'm with Lane Quick from Lane's Quickie Tacos and I love Lane's Tacos and am thrilled that he is one of the clients for the social media marketing class. So Lane, tell me how long you've been in business? Um, for May 18th of 2013. All right, and here we are on College Road next to the Marlin, just a simple walk away from campus. And tell us how you got to be here. How, what's your origin story of Lane's Quickie Tacos? Well, I just, I don't know, I guess it was about four, four or five years ago. I think it was like 2012, the winter of 2012. And uh, I, anyway, I missed my Tex-Mex food. I missed the food from San Antonio where I grew up. And uh, so I started making, there's a place called Torchy's Tacos in San Antonio where I was, I used to go to, or in Austin actually. And I used to go there before I'd visit my best friend. I'd go there first and go see my best friend. Okay. And eat the green chili pork taco they have there. So I tried to recreate that and I started cooking that and I started taking it to work I, where I bartended for what take it to my employees or my fellow employees and I fed them a lot. And they said, you should start selling this at the farmer's market. So that's kind of how it started. Okay. Yeah. You have quite the reputation at the farmer's market yeah. and sometimes you would drop into Hoodoo's. Yeah, I did that two or three years ago. Okay. And then what may, what was the inspiration to say, I need a brick and mortar place where people can come to me? I think that was the general evolution, I guess. The, I was, the plan was, I had like the five year plan. I was going to do the farmer's market, then I was going to build a food truck, then I was going to go brick and mortar. Okay. But this place popped up last year and the rent was good and the landlord was awesome and I signed a lease. All right. Skip the food truck. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, tell us what's on the menu here, at Lane's. What's what's unique about Lane's Quickie Tacos? Well, we only keep five or six items a day, so it's really always fresh, always. Uh, no, it's just always fresh. Okay. We're not we're not holding anything for five six days, and we're not. But we don't cook to order either, so everything's cooked overnight usually. Mm -hmm. So we come in at midnight and turn the stuff on, and it cooks all night. It's just good every day, but I think what people like is the carne guisada. It's a, it's a different style of meat. It's a San Antonio thing. It doesn't really exist north of San Antonio. Okay. So a lot of people enjoy that because it's different. It's unique. Um, the pulled pork everybody loves. It's super simple and good. Yeah. And uh, I guess the the kiddos are new one, the bean and cheese tacos because everybody loves bean and cheese tacos. Come on. Oh, and tell us about the hippie because that's what I Oh, yeah, order. the hippie. That mm. came up uh, two customers. Two people helped me with that. An old regular at the Blue Loon. Uh, her name is Sina. She actually works at the university. Okay. Sina Anahita. Okay. Um, Shout out, yay for the hippie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She recommended the, the, the kale stuff and uh, the vegetable ceviche came from my old the old cook that used to work there. Johnny Long, he's down in Arizona now. But yeah, he came up with the ceviche idea, so that how that came together. The cream sauce is mine. That was the only thing that's on mine on that okay. topic. Excellent. <laughs> So customers are helping you create products, so that's yeah. that's a good thing. So you've been in this building over a year, less than a year? October October 26th. So coming up on a year. Right. All right. So who is your clientele? Who's coming in? Do you have repeat customers? Are they all from the university? Are they students? Are they staff? Initially, initially it was a lot of the farmer's market people. because right. They're following you. Yeah, because I've made sure I posted all over Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're doing this, we're doing this, we're opening on the 26th, you know, we're not at the farmer's market anymore, come on down. And uh, that was my initial rush, but then when the word got out, I, we got some university people, we've got the people next door, we've got the Neon and USGS, and okay. I think the university offices are down the street here too, we've got them coming in. So, and at least 50-60% at least of my customers now are military. That's and, interesting. Yeah. Okay. How do you think they're, they're finding out? Their, I think they're missing their out their their food from out of state. Like a lot of them are from Texas or the mm -hmm. South, and they hear that oh, this guy's from San Antonio. He's got some good stuff. So how so are you? How, how do you think they're out. hearing about you? A lot of it's on Facebook, okay. um, and a lot of it's word of mouth too. And I've got flyers I printed up. And every time someone comes in that's kind of new, I'm like, take this flyer with you, put this up in your office, or okay. put it up at Safeway or the gas station or somewhere. Okay. <laughs> put it up in your church or something. <laughs> right. Who are your competitors and why do you think they're your competitors? I don't know if I have competitors. 
I mean, Burger King's your competitor. So any well, I, yeah. fast food. So who do you feel your direct competitors? And I don't. I never really thought about it. Okay. Uh, honestly, I was, you know, I was looked over those questions. And just, <laughs> I could never really figure out what my actual competitor was or who it, who it is. I mean, this is kind of new to me. I mean, it's all new to me. I'm just kind of winging it. Okay. All right. Well, that's why we're here to help. <laughs> um, you started off at Farmers Market, and you you can do pop up food trucks. Do you have any desire to do so in the future to help promote, like go to a military event, go to Chicken Stock, go to the thing on Harding Lake? Eventually, you know, eventually, maybe down the road, if I if I build an actual truck, I'd like to do it that way. I mean, just to get the word out that here, it, this is good, but here's where you come to get it all the time. Right, but I kind of got uh, lazy. Okay. <laughs> um, I did for four years. I set up a tent, tore down a tent, yeah. set up a tent, tore down a tent, right. set up a tent, tore down a tent. Every day, two, twice a week, three times a week, four times a week. Okay. Build a kitchen, tear down a kitchen. Build a kitchen, tear down a kitchen. Okay. It's not fun. Okay. So it's nice to be just in one spot here. Okay. And plus, I mean, if you look at it, I think talking to a couple of friends in town that have food trucks, you know, just because there's 200 people there doesn't mean you're going to sell 200 people, 200 sandwiches. Right. You might sell 30. So that's about the going rate right now because for some reason, you know, just because there's a bunch of people there doesn't mean they're all going to eat. Okay. You know, that's not the way it works. All right. And a lot of people outside of the food truck business think, well, they're, you know, you guys are making so much money and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. How can you, you know, you don't have to pay rent. That's not true because you got to pay. And wherever you go, wherever you park your truck, somebody's got to get a cut. Yeah. They're going to get 10% of your sales. They're going to get, um, you pay them so much per month. You know, you're. It's nothing's for free. Okay. All right. And then if you, you know, you show up to a place where there's 300 people, and you make, you bring 300, 300 people's worth of food, and you only sell 50, then you got all this food that goes to waste, and you're throwing money out the door. Yeah. So, I, I like what I do here. I like because we only have the five or six items, and like, if you know, say like someone wants lettuce and tomato. Well, I don't have lettuce and tomato. Mm -hmm. I've got what I have for those six tacos. That's what I have. Okay. You know, if I do the picadillo tacos, which you do every couple weeks or something, then I have lettuce and tomato because that goes on the picadillo taco. Right. So I don't have any waste. Okay. Which is that might be something we want to emphasize. Right. Is that it's going to be unique, and you are making sure that food doesn't go to waste, and I think that yeah. will be important to a certain segment. Oh yeah. Tell me about your hours. We're in the summertime right now, so. Yeah. Um, summer hours we. Uh, we just kind of kept the same farmers market hours okay. from like 11 to 3 because at the farmers market didn't really start getting busy till 11 and by 1.30 sometimes I was sold out we'd, in like two okay. and a half hours we'd sell out 100 pounds of meat um, it's not as much traffic here because uh, it's not that whole draw of all the different vendors and stuff right. but um, I lost my train of thought no we're talking about um your promote your hours now that it's summertime. Oh, yeah. So you mimic your 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 farmers market hours from eleven to three, and, and that, you're that open certain days. It. I'm we're, at the farmers market is only Wednesday and Saturday. Right. So now we're open Tuesday through Saturday. Okay. So um, close Sunday Monday. Close Sundays Mondays. I gotta have a weekend. Yeah. Everybody's gotta have a weekend. Gotta have you like off. You'll get time time off. And I everybody's like, why Sunday Monday? Sunday just because Sunday. I mean, not everybody in town is open on Sunday. It's a small town, and Monday. You gotta have a day to do business stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, go to Sam's Club. Gotta go to Sam's Club or go to the bank, okay. or um, the post office or the IRS office. Okay. All those government offices are only open Monday through Friday, so you gotta have a day to go do stuff like that. So that's why I'm close Sunday Monday. All right, I'm gonna take a guess where some of the student groups are going to take you, and I've talked to you about these things. And first of all, talk about evening hours. You're trying some evening hours now, and what are you finding? So three weeks ago, we started doing. Um, Thursday nights and Friday nights from 5 to 8. So I had a bunch of people online said, you guys got to open evenings, you guys got to open evenings, you guys got to open evenings. So I said, okay, we're going to try it. you got six weeks to do it. You have Starting now, you got six weeks, we're doing Thursdays and Fridays, 5 to 8. Right. The very first week, it was great. Okay. The first two days, Thursday and Friday, was and pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. The week after, ghost town. The week after, ghost town. Okay. This is on, now we're on week four. So I'm giving it three more weeks. All right. So all these people wanting me to be open, I'm open, okay. they're not showing up. 
and we discussed maybe it's a summer thing, so maybe well, trying it again yeah. in the winter. Yeah, I'm thinking about time. doing the winter. But okay. It'll after we take a little break. We're gonna take a break in September. Okay. We try to take two or three breaks a year because I only have one employee. So it's just you and one other guy. Me and Brady. Okay. Yeah. And you kind of want to keep it that way, from what I understand. Right. I just like to keep it. Well, what we do, we do fast. I mean, there could be 20 people in line for lunch sometimes, but you're in and out because mm -hmm. we've just got it streamlined down. And it's only six items, so I mean. Would you not, ever be willing science. to let somebody else in and just come help? Or is there a quality control thing? We don't need it right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then also the other thing I want to bring up, so the students are probably going to think this way, you're located right next to the Marlin, and I asked you, well, why not tap into the somewhat been drinking crowd of the Marlin, right. and what did you tell me? Well, um, the business just isn't there yet. I mean, from what I've seen, there's been other food trucks here. Um, when there's a captive audience of 200 people downstairs, there's five bands playing, everybody's having a great time, and he's parked right on the corner for six hours, and he sold maybe, he served maybe 20 people. Okay. So that's my first hand experience, and he's a good friend of mine in town, and we discussed that before. And I'm just thinking maybe my type of cuisine isn't an evening stuff. Okay. You know, it's good for lunch, because you can walk in, walk out, you grab it, it's, it's on the run food rather than, it's not kind of, it's more, it's not really a sit down kind okay. of food, it, like in the evening. Like when you get off work, you want to go hang out with your family and go to the bank sale house or mm -hmm. Gall Gall Galantino's or whatever, Geraldo, yeah. sit it's down. Insert restaurant here. Right. right. Okay. That, I think that's, my food's more of a kind of on the go thing. Okay. That's what I think. But I don't know, you never know. We'll try it. What is your goal? So tell me, Lane, you said I have a vision, I have a plan, and then you also said I'm just kind of, you know, figuring this out. So let's take you uh, two years away. What, what do you hope to see? What do you want to see? What do you want to happen? Two, two years from now? Sure. Uh, I'd like to have a, a bigger smoker. Okay. So I can do my, do more brisket. A lot of people are really enjoying the brisket. Okay. That's my new thing. Um, kind of Texas smoked mesquite smoked um, brisket and I turned that into a taco there's a po' boy sandwich back home mm -hmm. from San Antonio it's just called po' boy sandwich it's really soft it's just the soft white gushy bread yeah. and the sliced brisket and onions pickles Yum. you know it's like simple but I turned it into a taco and okay. everybody loves it and they're saying I got the best brisket in town and this and that so I was thinking about getting a big smoker and then maybe doing like four days a week tacos and one day a week here we got brisket by the pound you come in you know kind of like Franklin barbecue in Austin Texas where people okay. line up for three hours to get barbecue I'd kind of like that that'd be cool that, to be that that small guy I'm only open for three hours you got to go get the barbecue okay. let's do it you know so you want to drive demand for the limited time that you're open limited right. days and the quality product and maybe develop some product yeah. same place do you see yourself in the same Location in two years? At least, yeah, for a couple of years. Okay. Yeah. I don't see me going anywhere anytime soon because my rent's pretty decent and I couldn't I couldn't afford it anywhere else. Okay. Um, then maybe I could pay off the debt, the initial <laughs> investment, pay off the debt, put some money away. What? There's then, debt when you open your own business? Yeah, I'm okay. still paying it off. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to your social properties. So, um, do you use email marketing? at all? Do you use? I've never done email marketing. Okay. Do you use mobile marketing? Do you have any apps? I do not have an app. Okay. Um, then you do have social media platforms. Which social media platforms do you use? Um, originally I started with just Facebook. Then I did Twitter. And then Instagram started hopping up again. So um, I attached my Facebook account to my Instagram. So when I post on Facebook it goes to Instagram. Right. What do you use to do that? Do you know? Oh, I, oh just the okay, you just did it through the it. platform itself. Right, okay. through Facebook, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there, where there, the students will explore some other Hootsuite and this, the, if then this that kind of oh, yeah, stuff the that. IFT. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Are there any platforms that you're interested? In? Do you like the three that you have? Are there some that you're interested in? Do you use YouTube at all? I don't do YouTube, um, but something I could do maybe. I mean, I think student. Kind of, I'm I think. Shy. But I think you like to be behind. You said, told me, I'm right. comfortable when I'm behind the, right. the uh, I, kitchen. It just comes so from So if we show you working with the crowd, if we show you 
doing the brisket. I think that's something people might want to see. Not giving you ideas, students, yeah. but okay. Um, social media budget, both in time and money. How much time do you devote, let's say, in a month right. to social media? Um, and I, you do it all, right? I do it all. Okay. Um, I maybe spend five dollars a day. Okay. In advertising on Facebook, and I don't spend any on Twitter. Um, How much time? A couple hour hours a day? week. Okay. Maybe a couple hours a week, maybe. Okay, so if you're that, already willing to spend that much time, which is a lot of your competitors or not competitors are already not able to do. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, any traditional advertising like radio, newspaper? You said you have the flyers. Got flyers. Um, the other, uh, I was just approached by the radio stations, uh, Glenner in town. Do some trade out or something? Did, I did some trade out stuff. I gave okay. him a bunch of gift certificates for some airtime on the radio. And did he tell you what stations he wants to put you on? Uh, he's already been playing them. They're already been play they've been played the last two or three weeks. Is it like. It's um, just, I think it's 95 9. And which is classic rock. And then. Um, the I So country and rock. Okay. I got those two stations. Right. And yeah. you feel those are good fits for your target market? Yeah. Okay. It's just fun. I mean, so far. And let's talk about price. So price of one taco is like about five bucks. Average five. And uh, then two or, for yeah, two for nine. So if you get two, they're four fifty. Okay. But All that's right. that goes. That's a going rate right town. Yeah. You know, go anywhere. Go to go to Gallo's. Go to wherever. It's a five dollar taco. Well, plus trying to link quality. You're saying I use quality fresh ingredients oh, yeah. with price. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. So let's talk about successes and challenges of being a small business owner. So talk about. Relating to social media, one of the current successes stories that you want to share with us, like, wow, this really went well. Hmm. Got a lot of play on this, and I didn't expect it, or I did expect it. A lot of, I don't know, a lot of the response I got was when my mom died. Yeah. <sighs> okay. What year did your mom die? Right before we opened. So she knew you were going to open. Yeah. That's a good thing. She was the reason this place is open. So that's maybe a story you want to tell. I see that you have pictures. Yeah. But if I walk in, I want, you know, some more mom love. What's mom's name? Ellen. Okay. Ellen Quick? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody called her Mama Lane. Mama Lane? Yeah. I like that. All right, you ready for another question? Sure. Sure? All right, let's talk about <laughs> obstacles. obstacles. <laughs> All right, so what are your obstacles related to customers and maybe social media marketing? I don't know. What's, what, what, what is an obstacle? <laughs> well, never enough engagement. Yeah, I mean, I haven't figured out the actual, how the customers, every day is different. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can't, I, we, we haven't figured it out, but I guess it's, we're just kind of figuring maybe that's just the restaurant business. But like Tuesdays, there'll be a line out the door. Yeah. On Wednesday, it'll be a ghost town. Okay. Thursday, we'll have, you know, kind of a medium day. Mm -hmm. You know, Wednesday, hot day, uh, rainy day. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, it's like I, we can't figure it out. Okay. Like, Brady and I try to figure it out. Like you know, we'll expect oh it's going to be dead today, and then there's a line out the door. Okay. Just we don't know. Unexpected. We don't know. Okay. <laughs> like I don't know. Is it, does it have something to do with my posts? Am I, or does it not have something to do with the post? Like, okay. Or did somebody read something? Did, I don't know. We just haven't figured it out. Okay. But every day is really different. Are you to the point yet where I know that you post? In fact, let's tell me about your um, Bitmoji guy. You've got, uh, you've got a Bitmoji lane. What do you call him? It's a Mitomo from N lane? Nintendo. Oh, okay. It's like a, Nintendo has a social app. Okay. Oh, I forgot about that. That's called Mitomo. Okay. But nobody really uses it. All right. I use it because it's. You can take the little pictures. You can take your little me character and superimpose it on anything you want. Yeah, and that's sort of different. your trademark. Yeah, I guess. I kind of started using that like maybe about a year ago. Okay. Yeah. I just started using that. It just popped up. It's like, yeah, it's a good idea. I think we want to get you to the point where not only are you posting, but your customers are posting too. Right? That's because that's the power of sharing. And so I encourage students to think about in the restaurant business, maybe not as easy to do. So how do other restaurants get to the point where I'm going to Lane's today, had my birthday, 
you know, launch at lanes today. Oh, you got to get down here before the. Um, I do have a handful of out. customers. They 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 just they come in here and they'll go on like the Fairbanks restaurant reviews page. Like, oh, you got to go to Lane Squeaky Tacos. It's mm -hmm. really good. Da, da, da. Then there's always haters. That's okay. We can't control them, but we can <laughs> we can get more people to engage. Yeah. All right. What are your social media marketing goals? What do you hope? What do you want to happen when you're when you're posting on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? Why are you doing that? What, do you, what is just the end to, result? The end result, I guess, is just to get just a little more business. Okay. Just a little more. Like I had a goal set. Like if I sell this much per day, I can stay in business. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a little over that right now. It's where I can pay off debt and, and then maybe put something away for the future. But that you know that, that's the goal, man. I mean, I don't. I don't have an IRA, and I don't have a yeah. retirement plan, I don't have any, this is my retirement plan. So right now I'm paying off everything to start to open up the place, and then, then you know, you want to expand, you got to get another loan, and, mm -hmm. and you're paying that off. And right. So eventually, you know, if I go from that goal of to stay open money, to maybe like double that to stay open money, then that'll help me get to where I want to go further or faster and this is what you love to do oh yeah so it sounds like your goals are I want to keep doing what I love to do yeah I'm yeah. not gonna quit working okay. <laughs> okay so maybe on my days off on work clothes on Sundays Mondays I'm smoking brisket okay I'm glad you said brisket after that yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's maybe set a goal of I want social media to work more for me to bring in more business and to get yeah. the customers to help engage others right because military are transient, right? They 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 move out. Right, they're so here how do we two to four years. You know? To get people to say, oh, you just moved to town, you got to try lanes quick. Well, talkers. I kind of have a deal with the military guys oh. that come in here. Every time they come in, and they fall in love with the place, and they and they come, they keep they come once a week, mm -hmm. and I see them for two or three or four years okay. sometimes. So there's some of them I've known for four years now, and they're PCSing out. Okay. I was like, I, when you, before you leave, tell five of your friends. <laughs> Okay. They're like, oh, I've already told everybody. I know. I was like, oh, I know. Just make sure okay. before you leave, you tell five of your friends and military. And if the friend comes in and says code word so and so, right. eh, free yeah. taco. Yeah, that'd be cool. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Just throwing it out there. All right. How do you measure social media results? So you're saying I'm spending a couple hours a week on social media. Is it besides all I, all more business, people in the door? Is there any other measurements? The only way that I can measure it is what Facebook tells me. The insights. You've reached so many people. You've reached 3,000 okay. people this week. So, so you know how to do people. that. That's a good thing. Not every business owner does yeah. that. All right, let's talk to the students directly. So what do you want the students to know? What do you hope that they bring to you? You'll have three teams for their social media plans. You're like, yep, because you're yeah. uncomfortable being in front of camera. We're <laughs> going to be in your business for a semester, yeah. doing some more work together. But at the end, you want what to happen? I don't know, just blow me away with something. You know, I mean, I consider myself a pretty creative guy. I mean, I've been, I used to do creative writing and stuff in high school and college, and I was going to become a teacher, blah, blah, blah. Never panned out. I played, I was, a, I was a musician, so I mean, I think I have that creative brain to me. But, you know, like some other ideas I haven't thought of, you know, something, something funny. I like funny stuff. Mm -hmm. I like, uh, sort of, you know, raunchy humor but on a family level okay <laughs> you know just you like music i love music i can't we can't i wish there was music on and right what now. kind of music anything and you like um southern southern san antonio connection yeah yeah so yeah for sure san antonio definitely because that's the food that i cook okay it's not i don't i don't cook mexican food i don't cook Austin food. I don't cook Dallas food. I cook San Antonio food. That's the stuff I grew up with. Okay. Like my dad's. So we need kid. to have Mama Lane up here, and then yeah. San Antonio over here. I need to see some connection to what, yeah. who you are. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add to this conversation? Nope. You just spread taco love. Sorry. Glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that your is that your mantra? Spread taco love. Yeah. Is that your hashtag? Do you do that? I always hashtag taco love. All right. Everything I post is hashtag time. Lane Quick. Tammy Trigg is my cook. Go students and we you if you're in this group, you will be coming down here to check out the situation and see the atmosphere at Lane's Quickie Tacos. So now just stare at the camera for a while. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>